from the commonsenseshow.com with Dave Hodges. Lockdowns are no longer about COVID-19. The goal is regime change and the introduction of a reign of terror for all deplorables. Now, as CJ has brought up the graphic here with all the Nazi symbols, uh, don't worry, there's an explanation coming. I just want to point out how ridiculous it was. It was the Michigan governor, when they had the protests in the Capitol recently, saying that it was wrong to come with guns and swastikas. As if people were displaying swastikas like they were Nazis. No, I'm sorry. Who's the governor of Michigan? Anyway, she said that that they were carrying Nazi symbols to promote Nazism. No, they were calling you a Nazi. That that's what they were doing. We have all been awaiting the full implementation of Nazi Gestapo tactics on the American people in order to keep America locked down and thereby completing the task of destroying the American economy beyond repair after the release of the Chai Com bioweapon. Now, I, I do want to point out that this is coming from a Trump supporter's perspective. One other thing I wanted to explain in background to people who might not know. The goal is regime change and the introduction of a reign of terror for all deplorables. Who are the deplorables? Well, this comes from the Clinton-Trump campaign when Clinton referred to a certain group of Trump. There were certain qualifiers, but she called them the deplorable. And the Trump campaign supporters went, yeah, we're going to own that shit. We're the deplorables clinging to, as Obama said, our guns and our God and our or Bibles, or whatever it was back then, a common theme in the, the duopoly back and forth nonsense. And what's really sad about this is that Trump, it really is the greatest trick the Democrats ever played on Republicans, possibly the greatest trick besides the Federal Reserve System or government itself, that the establishment, the super classes imposed on the rest of us. Because now all of these people who would be at least opposing the Democrats' march to tyranny are going, Well, the Trump part of that we're okay with. And they play into the nonsense Trump narrative in this cue. Oh, well, Trump is really, even though he's, he's, he's taking away our freedoms and he's growing government and he's taking away gun rights, secretly he's playing 4D chess. Bullshit. So the release of the CHICOM by what is, what is CHICOM? That's Chinese communists. And I have no problem calling them the Chai Coms. Like, yeah, they're, they're the, the, the Communist Party of China. I mean, it's kind of a uh, Trump supporter specific term where they say Chai Com. I don't use that term. You know, like I, if, if I would say the Communist Party of China or, uh, you know, Communist China. But the, the Chai Coms, it's, it's become this term among Trump supporters. To, to, to demonize the, the outsiders of the Chinese. And to call the Chinese country or people communist is like calling the American people fascist because we elected Donald Trump. Like, no, we're not. We're not. We, we are the victims of this system. Similarly, the Chinese people are victims of their government. America has been defeated by the following forces. We have seen a partial Nazification of American society especially in places like Michigan, Texas, Maine, New York, Illinois, Georgia, California, and Arizona. America is being divided up among different ideologies in multiple domains. Our economic philosophy since COVID-19 has become communist in which the right to work at your essential job needed to put food on your children's table is regulated by government. This is where I get to say, where the hell have you been, Dave Hodges? Now, Dave, is, is you know uh, someone who I have you know, plenty of respect for as, as, a, as a media producer and as a thinker and all that. But no, this is this just shows the blindness that we have been fooled into. Even someone like David Hodges says that this is this is our economic philosophy since COVID nineteen. No, this has always been the case. Your essential job regulated by government? Regulation's not new, Mr. Hodges. I don't know if you heard about this. I don't know if you just started watching the news when coronaphobia hit. 
But government regulation has been a thing for a long time. People have been put out of work by regulations for a long time. Americans have been hurting economically because of government control of the economy for a long time. However, the corporate elite, banks, box stores such as Walmart, large brokerage houses, big pharma, et cetera, in this country are largely unaffected in the corporate-controlled oligarchy which dominates our government and controls portions of the deep state, Congress, Supreme Court, and the executive branch. And yes, the corporate oligarchy is dedicated to the overthrow of the republic, its civil liberties, for example, freedom of speech and religious worship and economic freedom. Okay, there's a lot to deconstruct here. Unaffected? By the corporate-controlled oligarchy? No, they are promoted, benefited, enriched. Jeff Bezos is richer than he has ever been with people turning more and more to online ordering in an age of Amazon near-monopoly status thanks to the U.S. government corporate policies. The corporate oligarchy dedicated to overthrow the republic. What, what republic? If you, if you mean the government that was allegedly envisioned by the people who cared about what, what am I saying? The Constitution was a counter-revolution. It was a coup to create a new strong central authority. It was the founders who said, fuck you to the king. We're not going to be a part of your empire anymore. It was the framers who created the new central authority under the Constitution that authorized taxation, a standing army, intellectual property, slavery, and, and all the other problems with the Constitution. That's They want this. This was the setup of the elites. You are missing the point, Mr. Hodges. This hybrid form of emerging ruling structure also contains the worst characteristics of Nazi Germany. Yeah, but it already did before this. So skipping ahead, because I do, because because there are some really important things in this story that are positive in questioning this bigger narrative. The lab coach coup participants and their heinous conflicts of interests. Because of the nature of the emergency powers that have stripped Trump of his executive branch powers, and the United States is under big pharma martial law with Fauci sitting at the head of the table. Okay, this isn't the good part of the article. This is the ridiculous part of the article. Excuse me. The emergency powers that Trump declared have given him more power. Have given the federal government more power to serve their sponsors in big pharma. Do you think Fauci is sitting at the head of the table and not Trump? Really? You know, he could fire him at any time. He actually retweeted a tweet with hashtag fire Fauci in it. Mr. Hodges, you seem to have things pretty well confused here. So well, let, let, let me explain. Donald Trump cannot be bought. His supporters were correct in saying that. Why? Because he's been in the pockets of the big banks for a long time. He has been a part of this racket. He's not an outsider. He was a fake outsider. Just because he hadn't held elected office didn't mean he wasn't part of this oligopoly. Jeez, please remove your head from your fifth point of contact and see the light about what Donald Trump really is. It's not like he came out and in his press conferences was like reluctant to support this. No, he came out and put out a campaign ad. Look at how vigorous my response as president has been to the coronaphobia crisis. He has called for more government intervention. He has specifically said that we are going to bring back restaurants that have closed under new ownership. He has empowered Fauci by saying we are going to have the CDC conduct its deliberations on corona crisis policies in secret. No. At the center of what I am now dubbing the lab coach coup against America are generationally embedded doctors with heinous conflicts of interest, which clearly impacts their professional judgments in the performance of their federally mandated duties. Fauci and Burks exemplify the problem with allowing generational public servants to privately profit from their positions of authority at the expense of those they are federally mandated to serve. Fauci, Burks, et al. are the leaders of the big pharma deep state apparatus. Eventually, these conflicted public servants become owned by someone for their own personal benefit and the benefit of their puppet masters. As if Trump is any different. He doesn't have puppet masters. Really? He cannot be threatened or bullied into changing his policies? Oh, wait, he just did, because he had the correct position on corona 
when he started talking about it saying yeah it's kind of like the flu not as bad of a threat though no reason to do anything serious and well what do you know either he's spineless or he's in on it so skipping ahead here however as an example of these conflicts of interest let's take a look at arizona my home state yes arizona governor Ducey sits on the board of directors for tgen tgen is working on the so-called vaccine which will be rushed to market with no conceivable way to be absolutely certain that the vaccine works in replicable testing and patient safety be damned in this all too short window of public safety testing Ducey has artificially kept arizona locked down against all reason on may 1st the largest county in arizona maricopa witnessed 67 percent of the deaths from COVID 19 were in live-in assisted care facilities for the elderly yet this population represents only 0.00001 percent of the population of one of the largest counties in the country the 20 to 44 age groups infection rate is the highest in the country but they account for the least amount of deaths therefore the data clearly shows that a targeted intervention not a one size fits all approach is needed but don't confuse Ducey with the facts because he has an agenda of course and it is obvious to this research researcher that if Ducey Newsom Whitner Whitmer that's uh Doug Ducey Arizona Gavin Newsom California uh Meg Whitmer in Michigan and all the governors can keep a large part of the population locked down or at least partially locked down and these people are feeling the economic heat they will gladly accept Bill Gates vaccine which will go down in history due to the rapidity of its development as unsafe at any speed Ducey is merely a microcosm of the public harming conflicts of interest that exist for many of our political leaders he is as guilty as Fauci in the deaths that are occurring because of the rampant unemployment now I love this we're going to get into these statistics this is what I really wanted to share in a positive sense from the story Mike Adams what I got to say, say first Mike Adams friend of mine naturalnews.com and at first Mike you know and, and as a libertarian Mike has has definitely taken the principal position you know force lockdowns martial law this is ridiculous but at first he was really playing up and and look you know looking at the government numbers going yeah this is this is a serious threat it seems like he's revised his position I'm greatly uh, appreciative of that and I still support naturalnews.com as a great resource for health information certainly outside of the narrative that Fauci and Burks would want you to believe so Mike Adams in a discussion we had last night both agree that these officials should be charged with manslaughter that's pretty stringent there remember for every one percent increase in unemployment the death toll goes up a minimum of 10,000 deaths some actuaries place the lockdown toll with regard to resulting fatalities as 29 times greater than COVID-19 deaths and that's reported deaths if the reported deaths are accurate and I guarantee you they are not they are going to keep coming down in this analysis but if they are as high as they are or as high as the government tells us they are the fatalities from the economic shutdown already are being estimated as 29 times greater so consider these numbers at the end of 2019 unemployment in the u.s 3.5 percent on may 1st this year government reported through 30.5 million jobless claims the number of full-time workers just prior to the recognition of COVID 19 as a public threat or i should say is it do we recognize is it, is it a no it's the false recognition that it was was 110 million so the effective unemployment rate 27.72 percent more than five percent more than at the height of the great depression on may 8 many are speculating that the unemployment claims will top 35 million a lot of hurting people now when you have a broken leg yes you want to grab for a crutch so that that leg can heal but it's not really accurate in our analogy that we like to say the government breaks your leg gives you a crutch and says if it wasn't for government that you couldn't walk what what, what a more accurate analogy here right because the leg's not broken not yet the economy is not beyond repair so to speak there is a lot of damage that is beyond repair that we will never recover from there are businesses that will not be able to come back there are people who have lost their jobs that will not come back 
There are people who have lost their homes who will not be able to get them back. There are companies going under today, declaring bankruptcy, that will not come back. But it's more like, I don't know, a swarm of fire ants biting, chewing up our leg, taking out chunks here and there. You can't walk on that leg because it's burning, it's in pain, and it sucks. Yeah, it really hurts. But the leg is not broken. You brush off the fire ants, and you can walk. The pain subsides, the little wounds heal, and we don't need a crutch. And if anything, at this point, if you are saying, with the one breath that you have to speak on the issue, with the one bit of energy that you have to fight the current situation, instead of brushing the ants off of your leg, you reach for the crutch. Well, guess what's going to happen? They'll keep chewing until they're through the skin and the meat is gone and they're down to the bone. And perhaps at that point, you'll really need that government crutch. What a pathetic existence that I think we should do everything possible to avoid. Don't waste any energy grabbing for a government crutch that you don't need. Uh, back to the numbers here. Conclusions from the data. All statistics are from the Department of Labor. Very shady source, of course, but when they point out their own contradictions in terms of government messaging, we will take their numbers. On May 1st, the increase in unemployment came in at an amazing 24.2% increase from the baseline. May 1st, true unemployment rate equals equates to an increase of deaths in America to 240,200. How many people are actually going to die from this in the long run? I, I hope we're easing up right now. I hope that uh, governors declaring an end to lockdowns and shutdowns is, is America brushing off the ants and that we won't have the suicides and the starvation and the stress and the violence and everything that goes with the economic deprivation that we're experiencing right now, especially if it is prolonged much longer. 240,000. If the May 8th unemployment rate is the, at the 35 million jobless claims, the death curve will have increased by a stunning 32%. This equates to an increased American, uh, an increased, uh, an increase of American deaths to 320,000. This is clearly a case of the cure is worse than the disease. It is irrefutable at this point. And while obviously Dave Hodges and I have our differences, it is important that we hang together so that we don't hang separately. And everybody who understands the cure is worse than the disease push back against this very, very fraudulent, not quite, not even close, cure.